Welcome back, guys. We're working with non-proportional relationships today. So without further ado, let's look at this. Understanding this is going to look a little bit different than a proportional relationship. So FitLife Gym charges customers for each month of membership as shown in the table. Now, what do you notice is different about this compared to a proportional relationship? Hopefully you're noticing this, right? When, when we have zero months, we have a cost of $10. So that means it's, this is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. If there's zero months and $10, that means there must be an upfront cost, right? Because one month is $30. And this isn't to say that every month costs $30. If that were true, then at two months, we would have $60, but we don't. So let's go ahead and, and graph this out. So we have at zero months, we have $10. Let's draw a dot there. At one month, we have $30. Let's draw a dot there. Two months, we have $50. Three months, we have $70. And let's go ahead and draw that out. Connect those dots. So notice, we still have a straight line here. But what's different about this from a proportional relationship? Well, it doesn't go through the origin 0, 0. So is this relationship proportional? No, because spelled that wrong because it doesn't go through the origin. So what that means for us is a relationship is non-proportional if the if the ratio between the two quantities is not constant. Man, I can't talk today. It's not constant. Right? In other words, what that means is if I were to do we talked about finding our constant of proportionality if I were to do 30 divided by one, I'd get 30. But again, I said at the beginning, this is not $30 a month because I should be able to then take this Y value divided by this X value and still get 30. But 50 divided by two doesn't give me 30. It gives me 25. And then 70 divided by three also doesn't give me 30. It gives me something much smaller. I think it's 20, some, 20 point something. Okay, so that's the big difference between non-proportional and proportional. And we're going to see this throughout this lesson today. All of these examples are going to be non-proportional. But let's go ahead and fill in some of these up here because I want to make some notes about what a non-proportional relationship looks like. So first off, the ra ratio of y over x is no longer constant. Uh, and this only applies when we're talking about non-proportional relationships. Now, you can still try to, to do y divided by x and find those numbers, but it's not going to work for a table or a graph that is non-proportional. So in other words, when we're talking about non-proportional, it does not con contain the point zero, 0, but instead, when x is 0, y is going to be a non-zero constant. Now, here's where it's going to look a little bit confusing. We're going to write 0, comma, y, indicating that y is just not 0. It can be a negative number. It can be a positive number, but it is not going to be 0. All right, so I hope that doesn't confuse you too much, but um, we don't have 0, 0 anymore. But rather, when x is 0, y is going to be a number anything but 0. So as far as the graphs go, the line will not pass through the origin, or what we call 0, 0. Instead, the graph will cross the y-axis at a point known as the y-intercept. The y-intercept. So you notice here the y-intercept is below 0, 0, right? Sometimes it could be above, sometimes it could be below. Uh, number one. So let's take a look at what this means uh, graphically, right? The table shows the cost in dollars of jumping at terrific trampolines y in relation to the hours of jumping x. So Here's our X values, here's our Y values. Let's go ahead and graph. So at zero hours, there is a cost of $6. At one hour, there's a cost of $8. Two hours, there's a cost of $10. And for three hours, you're gonna pay $12. Now understand this is in total, right? I'm not saying that at the first hour, you're paying $8. When you're, when you're there the second hour, you're gonna pay 10 more dollars. No, this is, in total, if you get there and you say, hey, I want to I want to buy one hour, they're going to charge you $8. If you say, hey, I want to buy three hours, they're going to charge you $12. Okay, so notice we still make a straight line here, but it does not go through the origin. 
So I wanna make sure that we make that distinction. So we can still have a straight line. We just don't go through the origin. So let's take a look at the next one here. So here we have X is zero when Y is one. Um, when X is one, Y is four. When X is two, Y is seven. When X is three, Y is 10. So I'm gonna start up at the top here so we can see, right? I can draw this line all the way through. And I've had students ask why I draw arrows on both sides of here. Well, because it can go either way. When we only have one corner of the graph here, we typically start, because you can't have less than zero hours, right? So we start at six and then we move up to the right. The arrow just means we can find values that are greater than what we show on the graph. Okay. So now let's take a look at a scenario. At Pizza Palace, Rashid orders a pizza that costs $8 plus $2 per topping. So let's go ahead and complete this table here. So we have $8 plus $2 per topping. So hopefully you can figure out what our constant is and what our variable is here, because we've talked about writing out equations for this before. So at zero toppings, we would say our cost is $8. In other words, we set, we would write it as eight plus $2 per topping times zero, right? Zero toppings. So what about when we add one topping? Well, then we'd have $8 plus two, $2 per topping times one topping, which would give us $10. And we can keep this going on. Two times two would give us 12. Another one, two times three now would give us 14. And of course, two times four would give us 16. Okay, so now we can go ahead and graph that out. So again, at zero toppings, you will have paid $8 for the pizza at 110, 212, and you can see this pattern going on up through. Okay, let's talk about writing the equation. Now I did, I did hint at the fact that we've, we've written equations for um, scenarios like this before, where eight is our constant and two is, represents our variable. So the equation here should be fairly easy to write. The difference is now we're writing it as y equals, and we're adding in these two things. Now we're actually gonna write it backwards a little bit. I know I wrote eight plus two times zero over there, but we're gonna put our coefficient and variable first. So we're gonna write this as two x plus eight, where the, the constant is always going to be at the back end of this equation. Now, letter A asks, what is the initial value or the cost of pizza? We said this already. It's $8. We're going to pay $8 for a pizza regardless of, well, if there's zero toppings, right? $8. So where do you see the initial value in each representation? Well, let's, let's distinguish between the two different things. So we have a graph and we have an equation. And I want to make sure we distinguish what the difference is. In the graph, we see the initial value. Um, above zero, zero, right? So in this case, above zero, zero, um, or we could say at zero, eight. So this is a, an important distinction because only non-proportional relationships are gonna start anywhere other than zero, zero. Now in the equation, we're gonna write that it's at the end. At the end of the equation is what you could put at the end of the equation. So it's always, almost always the last thing that we write in there. All right, so see, what is the rate of change for the situation? It is our variable or our coefficient, which is $2. And where do you see the rate of change in the equation? Um, at, well, it's right before, right before the variable. Um, also, we call this the coefficient. So I know I said it, but I want to make sure we write that down as well because it, it is called the coefficient and it is a term that we're going to use from time to time. I want to make sure we have our terminology down. All right, let's take a look at number four now. Clear my screen. Okay, number four says Mr. Tian asked his students to create representations of non-proportional relationships which student which student correctly completed the task. So I kind of hinted at this earlier. I said, we can use the y over x idea, but it's not going to work when it's not proportional, right? So if, it, if there is no constant, it is non-proportional. 
So, and we're looking for which ones are non-proportional. So we're looking at LEs first. So if we do 21 over two, we'll find we get 10.5. If we did 42 over four, uh, we'd get the same thing. If we did 63 over six, we would still get the same thing. And if we did 84 over eight, we still get the same thing. So what this means is this is proportional because it's the same proportion all the way through. In other words, um, if X is zero, Y would end up being zero as well. So this is not, um, not what we're looking for. It is proportional. We're looking for non-proportional, right? So what about Gary? Well, Gary is non-proportional because he has the constant added to his equation. So we're going to circle that one. Cedric is not because he doesn't have anything added to it. So his is proportional. And Cena is also proportional because it doesn't go through zero, zero. It goes through the y-intercept. All right. Lastly, number five, determine if each table below represents a proportional or non-proportional relationship. Again, we're looking here since they give us a value at zero when x equals zero. Because there's a value here that is not zero, this is non-proportional. And then looking at table B, um, you notice there is a pattern. We're going up by 14s. So since we're going up by 14s, this one is proportional because if I go down to zero, y is going to be zero. All right, that I believe that does it for today. I'll see you guys next time.